Aloha, my people, and welcome to this program. Listen, this is going to be a live recording. My Q&A section is hanging out in the chat, ready for me to get done. Right after I'm done with this, I'm going to answer their questions. And if you want to be a part of the live studio audience, you know what to do. Show up here on Tuesdays or Saturday at 8 a.m. Hawaiian. Uh, you translate that. We don't do time zones over here. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, yeah, just come through. We're more than happy to help you get your thing started. Today, I want to talk to you guys about the F word. That's right. Today we are talking about the F word. And no, not that one that you're thinking of. I'm talking about the one that just ruins lives and ruins business, especially business. So if you're a serious content creator or you're dabbing in and still even just thinking about, do I want to take this seriously? This is definitely for you. We're going to talk a little bit about focus, right? This has been the hardest nut to crack as a content creator. And part of the reason for that is there is always something brand new coming down the pike. There is always something hot, something new. There'll be somewhere in the next year or so a new technology or a new social service or something, and everybody will be all the rage. Well, what happens in this situation is FOMO kicks in, and then FOMO tells you <laughs> that you got to be there. Uh yeah, you know, I highly suggest diving in and securing your username. But if you're still growing your business, if you're still growing your channel, growing your podcast, growing your audience, your membership, whatever it is, maybe you want to go in and turn right back around and walk back out. <laughs> OK, uh, so here, here's what I mean by this. Um, the the hardest part about success in this particular industry is success is not an accident and unfortunately that conversation happens too much like too many things go quote unquote viral and all of a sudden this person blew up and all of a sudden this person did this that and the other thing nine times out of ten if you dig deep into any of those stories that person's been at it for a minute before that pop off right I just came from a conference in LA with a bunch of professional people who should absolutely know better. And there's still sessions on virality. There's still sessions on how to make your TikTok go viral, how to make your Insta or YouTube content go viral, how to make your podcast episode go viral. I don't want to be mean, <laughs> but I want to call those conversations bullshit. <laughs> Just step away from the viral. It is not good in any way, shape, or form. Uh, the, partially because if I posited to most people, like, what was viral four years ago, they don't know. If I even say what was the most viral video of two years ago, you probably don't know. Virality doesn't stick. You're normally trying to build something that sticks, right? There's a famous book called Made to Stick. That's what you're looking for. Stickiness is good. You don't want to deal with virality. So as we talk about this focus thing, I just want you to keep this in the back of your head. Write this down. As a matter of fact, if no one's around you to look at you weird, say it out loud because I need this to stick in your brain. Success is not an accident. Okay, we're going to get into some of the practicalities of how to get focused. And as I say these things, some of you are going to be screaming at me. Some of you are going to be screaming at me hardcore because you have a particular situation and that particular situation doesn't allow you to X, Y, or Z. I'm going to say this right now. And if you're the type of person with lots of feelings, I'm going to just go ahead and invite you to click away because <laughs> I'm coming in. And if you're the type of person that just enjoys making a good excuse, you can listen if you want to. But you might want to click away because, uh, yeah, this is not a place for excuses. This is a place for you to, like, really, really scratch, stretch, cause a little bit of pain and get this thing did right we're going to get it done but it's going to require a little bit of pain none of this is going to be easy i'm i'm like really trying to step away from the easy conversations because it gives people a false sense of security okay so listen if you have kids i didn't do that that's on you it's nobody else's responsibility but yours. Do not use your children as an excuse. It's not an excuse. They're people. 
They're little small people. They're really expensive, and they pass germs around and get the rest of us sick, but they're yours, right? You have to figure this out. This is not our problem. I didn't do it, okay? Uh, your kid might look cute like me, but I didn't do it. If you have an aging parent that you have to take care of, you know what? I wish I had that responsibility back. I bitched about it the entire time, and now my dad's not here to get on my nerves, and I kind of miss him getting on my nerves. So I supplement him getting on my nerves with Paul. Hi, Paul. I love you. <laughs> anyway, that's that. That's still, don't use people as an excuse. Don't use your spouse or your family or anybody else as an excuse. That is really unfair to them. <laughs> okay? Uh, you did this. These things are in your control. You are nobody's victim. You are You are absolutely in control. Okay? So... At this point in time, you will have some situations that will make it different. You have some situations that's going to make it harder. But number one, you're built for this. Remember that. And number two, and everybody in the LGL fam, you can say it with me. Your excuse is valid. Now what? <laughs> okay. I don't want to take your excuse off the table because your excuse is 100% valid. Now what? What are you going to do about it? Okay. Let's dive in. Let's dive in. All right, so the first thing, and I've said this a couple thousand times about the F word, let's get focused, is you have to define your mission or your purpose. If you have no clue where you're going, how are you going to know where you're going? Wait, that didn't make sense. How are you going to know when you got there, right? If you have no clue where you're going, how are you going to know where you're going? Right? It literally, I know a lot of people are still trying to find their purpose. They don't understand their purpose, but you have to know your mission. What is your mission right now? If you're growing your your channel, growing your podcast, growing your business, whatever the case may be, you have to define what that is. If you don't know, you will forever struggle. Okay? So, you know the fastest way to drown? Panic. Flail your arms. The easiest way not to drown is to calm down. If you're at the top of the surface, take a deep breath. And even if you just held that in your lungs and leaned back, you probably won't drown. <laughs> it's just one of those things. But most people get in the water and they start panicking and flailing. They overtired themselves. They give themselves a minor heart attack and then they drown. It happens all the time here. It's a very common practice. If you, in that situation, your only mission is to breathe and stay calm, right? So if you can pop to the top, breathe slowly, stay calm, keep your chest inflated, you probably won't drown until the lifeguard can get there. So knowing your mission, better yet, knowing your purpose is going to help you. Now, the second part of the situation is going to be you have to absolutely des decide what success looks like for you. If you are deciding what success looks like based on someone else, you're going to have a drama. Right. If you're deciding what success looks like because you looked at a different channel, uh, you know, you looked at uh, Paul's channel or Louisa's channel and you say, I want to do that. You're going to struggle. You will struggle because that is not your success. That's somebody else's success. Right. Um, you know, it's kind of funny when I was a, a little wee children, I used to have, you know, pictures on the wall of Lamborghini Contosh. You know, that was the move back then. Uh, right now. I wouldn't want one. <laughs> number one, it's old school. It's outdated. <laughs> uh, number two, uh, yeah, I just realized it'd be more hassle than what it's worth. Uh, you know, at the time, that's all I wanted because I thought that would be the, the move for success is pulling up in the contacts and like, I look cool. Nah, you know, not really. Uh, I'd, I'd rather have a, a F1. <laughs> anyway, uh, so decide what that looks like to you. And I will say this is hard. And you must let this sink in your melon. If your success is only defined by monetary value, you might struggle. You might not. You might struggle, though. I think a lot of people, when you're just purely motivated by money, it really throws you off because it causes you to chase and it causes you to do things that probably aren't within your mission. But here is one of the first steps that's going to really, really help you. You got to start by making fewer decisions. That one's crazy. That one's crazy. Listen, so in other words, if you have your, your setup systematized where you can just come in, sit down, and do what you have to do, and you don't constantly find yourself 
in a position to be making decisions, you will get further along. You will make progress, right? Um, and one of the things that you can do to help you with this decision-making process is have a really simple flowchart. Is what being asked of me going to take me further towards my mission? Yes. If it's not, no. If you want to get fully focused, anything that doesn't take you further towards your mission, towards your purpose, move you along the needle or the the, the guide path, post, track, whatever, uh, the answer is no, right? I think too many of us get caught into the trap of constantly doing one more thing because somebody said, hey, let's do this, and then you you really jump in. And you're like, yes. You say, yes. Okay, let's do this. Yes, let's do this. Okay. So here's here's the thing. The next time someone comes at you with something cool, sounds like a cool project, and you're really excited about it, I want you to say, uh, let me get back to you. If they tell you, hey, you have to decide right now, tell them no. <laughs> if, if not, tell them, let me get back to you and sit on it for 24 hours. Like, deeply think about it. Like, if... You are still excited the next day. If you still have that same energy you had right before you said yes the next day, you can probably do it. If some of that excitement is worn off or you just don't feel jazzed about it or better yet, you forget to call your homie back, the answer was no in the first place. It's so easy to get jazzed up and be like, yeah, I'm going to do that, you know, especially uh, oftentimes if it's something to do with like a. Uh, a lot of times family members are the worst, right? They're going to drag you into doing something. And it's like, oh, we're going to do this kind of, you know, situation. And it's not going to make or break your, your relationship with the family. Then just say no. <laughs> you know, the next time your friend wants to do something crazy that's going to take you away from doing what you know you need to do, say no. The reason why you don't have the time is because you're saying yes to things that doesn't really help you. And it's not driving you towards your success goal. And you're, that's a distraction. It really is, whatever it is. So the next time someone asks you to do something, start with no. And then you can change it to yes if they can convince you. Or you find a good enough reason. Or you sat on it for 24 hours and you're still excited about it. So as a people pleaser, I used to always be like yes to everything. And then I realized, no, I can't do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So somebody will call you and be like, hey, man, uh, are you busy next week, Thursday? I'm like, Why? oh, I got this printer and I can't really get it set up and you're the person that knows how to do it or whatever. And you know what? I would be like, yeah, yeah, I'll pop over because it's only going to take me 15, 20 minutes. But it's not because it's going to take me 15, 20 minutes to fix that printer, but it's going to take me 20 minutes to get there and 20 minutes to get back. At this point, that is an hour. That is an hour that I can't get back because I went to go put a printer in for somebody who refused to read the instructions. Right. You understand? Wait 24 hours, even if it's your own dumbass idea. <laughs> sit on it for 24 hours. And if you're still excited about it, come back at it and be like, OK, if, it, if you even start guessing, no, change the answer to no. A whole bunch of us got to get to know. Like we talked about that last week. A whole bunch of us got to get to know. So when someone says, hey, man, uh, they got this whole brand new joint. Gemini 1.5 and you got to download this and check it out and start messing with it. No, sit on it. If you're still curious in 24 hours, jump in. All right. So remember that. Now, the other thing that you have to do, and this one is super hard. You have to stop hunting. Right now, some of you are hunting for the shortcut that's going to make this easier. Number one, they don't freaking exist. There are no shortcuts. Number two, what the hunting does to you is it right when you're about to give up, it gives you a little morsel of happiness or joy or success. And then you like you keep hunting. This is the social media trick one on one. Anybody that remembers old school Facebook, Twitter used to get to the bottom of the page and then you'd have to hit load more. It show you like 50, 60, whatever you get to the bottom of the page, you hit load more. 
somebody figured out. I actually know exactly who figured it out. Uh, I've met him many a times, and we've had conversations. He even did a presentation at my co-working space back in the day. Uh, you would get to the bottom of the feed, and you would have to hit load more, and he was like, we should turn that off. We should have it just automatically keep scrolling. And so what happens, and you can see this right now on your Instagram feed, if you open up your Instagram feed, one, two, three, commercial, <laughs> right? Uh, in, in your Instagram feed will be, your first post will either be something 100% exciting to you or something that absolutely piss you off. If you do not have a highly curated Instagram feed, if you open IG right now, the very first post is either really pisses you off or really makes you excited. You will never see a medium post first, ever. It just doesn't happen. Uh, if you can pull that off, you have very little feelings and you're a good person. <laughs> but for the most part, your first post when you open IG is either polarizing as hell or got you cracking up or happy, smiling, giggling, or wanting to share it. Almost always, right? Um, so th the way you do this is, you know, I don't want to say stop scrolling i don't want to be that person that makes excuses that social media is killing everything because it's not uh that's up to you if you create positive uh you know forward-leaning content if you absorb positive forward-leaning content if you are absorbing content that's all about a world being a better place and you being a happier person you will see less and less and less of the heinousness it will eventually just disappear from your feed so if you react to the slightest post that pisses you off, they got you because they will add 30 times more of that. If you react to the cute, you know, puppy situation, they're going to try to hit you with something angry again. And you're going to react to the next cute puppy situation and they're going to try to react to you to something angry again. It's going to take you like 15, 20 times of enjoying a happy post before they be like, all right, we can't get this bitch. This bitch is hardcore and they just enjoy life. They will send you only enjoy life stuff. Every once in a while, they will tempt you with a little bit of let's go, Brandon, and you just got to ignore it. Right. You got to ignore it. Don't jump in. Don't look at it. Scroll right past it. The minute you see it, get it angry. Move like don't react. Do not open the comment section. Don't open the comment section to read how dumb other people are. All of the above is interacting with it. If you just slide past it, good. If you hit dislike button, they know exactly where to trigger you. And they will send you more of what you just dislike as well. If it's, you know, about staying on the platform. Because people will stay to argue. Okay? So, stop hunting. And some of that stop hunting includes stop hunting in the old feeds. Or stop looking for things that validate your excuses as to why you can't do what you want to do. Right? All of those levels of hunting. Uh, taking At this point in time, if you haven't taken an AI class, maybe you should. Um, but if you've taken four stop at this point in time just do right if you haven't taken an audio workshop maybe you should if you take in four or five of them no more stop cancel christmas you know what i mean time to actually start doing some shit you know what i mean all right cool now if you find yourself constantly responding reacting or replying you are you're going to be got it off your course no matter what Right. If you open your email and you spend two hours replying to everybody else's problems, solving everybody else's problems, answering everybody else's questions, you're going to struggle. How do I know this? Because that's my job. My job is to respond to everybody else's problems. And my job is to react to everyone else's problems and to, you know, uh, solve problems that are happening in the community because somebody's being an a-hole. And it just distracts us from our whole business. I am blessed right now that, uh, see, Paul is in the chat. Luis is in the chat. A couple other moderators. Anybody else in here uh, in the chat? They know because they get responsible for it too, right? They get to know that there are days where we got a lot of stuff to do. Uh, there's Kevin. Kevin's in here, right? We got a lot of stuff to do. And in the middle of that, we got to stop and go into the Discord or go into the Facebook group and calm down somebody who's being an absolute jerk. Calm down somebody who is blaming the software for their inability to read instructions. Uh, you know, just, just being wild, wild and out here. You know what I'm saying? And 
every time we have to stop and put out one of those fires, that slows down our ability to make the product better, right? So if you open up your email and your email is all about reacting to somebody else's BS or answering somebody else's things or solving somebody else's problems, um, yeah, maybe if you can, if there's a possibility, <laughs> if there's a po possibility, be like, yeah, I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, uh, let me point you over here, even though you might know. <laughs> you might have to stop trying to save the day, especially when you're trying to save somebody who doesn't want to be saved. Right. Even I find Paul and Luis and I find ourselves stopping to answer comments of people who are just seeking attention. And it's really frustrating and it sidetracks the whole party. You know what I mean? So like I'm like, yo, I know it's hard, but we have to learn to ignore those who we can tell are just seeking attention and let them go. Right. So if you're the reason why you're losing focus or one of the key reasons why I find a lot of people lose focus, and I say this because this is me, I know this because it's my job. If you have to always respond, reply, or react to somebody, you're going to be guide off course, right? If your day is controlled by your inbox, you are most likely losing. So how do you solve this problem? I'm going to give you an answer in a minute, but make sure you check that later. So like if inboxing basically fires to screw your whole day, don't open that joint for the first two hours of the day. Ignore it. Like, somebody's going to be mad because you didn't get back to them as fast as they want. You know what they'll eventually do? <laughs> Write this down. If you don't, okay, let's say Monday, instead of opening the, the email box at 7, you open it at 9. That means in that two hours, you get to focus on yourself, right? And you and yourself knock yourself out. You start doing what you need to do. Eventually, the person who likes to bug you on Monday morning 7 with the email, they won't email you because you're not responsive. We all have these conversations about, I would send an email to, to Dickie, but Dickie never answers his emails. They will stop emailing you. If you, The reason why these people bug you is because you respond to them. So you all have that person you know if you text them, you won't get a text back for two days. That person is probably doing better than most because they're not spending their day putting out other people's fires. So I have a long time ago I did this and it absolutely worked. There's a reason why I can speak to focus on this. If you call my phone, my voicemail will say, I don't check voicemail. So do not leave a voicemail because if you do, I will never hear it. If you really need something, text me. The reason why I did that, a mentor told me this long time ago. People do not want to spend the time to write out their whole drama in a text. They want to get on the phone with you and talk to you and take like an hour. But if you make them type out their drama, half the time they'll, you're the path of least resistance. So they'll skip you and go to the next person who will absorb their problem, right? The psychological vampires will leave you alone and move to the next person who they know will absorb their problem. The empaths of the world, God bless you. <laughs> we need you to keep those mofos away from me, right? All of you uh, people with the feelings, <laughs> like, I'm glad you're here because they'll be like, yo, Doc is just going to yell at me, so let me bother this person who won't yell at me. Sorry, Paul. <laughs> because I'm going to be like, what the F you want? And no. <laughs> so if you can build a thicker skin to that and not become the the solve everybody's problems person, which I did for the longest time, boom. You know what I mean? And it's funny that I mentioned empath and Tati pops up in the chat. Sorry, Tati. Thank you. God bless you for being here. <laughs> because it's people like Tati who will listen to your feelings that save them from me. <laughs> okay. All right. So listen. Now, here's one of the last steps, and I'm going to get to the action steps. Okay? I think it's very important that you understand one of the things that's bothering you right now. And if you agree with this, this is one of those times where I'm going to ask you, even in the grocery store, you're going to look like an absolute idiot. I want you to respond out loud. Yes, that's me, but not anymore. Not today, Carol. When things take you off of your focus, you lose progress. And lack of progress lose focus okay focus dies with lack of progress so if your goal was 
to write another chapter in this book. And this week got crazy because you're putting out somebody else's bullshit. You could not do that. You're like, ah, oh, I'm going to have to double up next week. So Monday comes around. You're ready to double up. And you're like, okay, I got to do two chapters this week because last week I couldn't do a chapter because, you know, I spent the week hanging out with Tommy. And you're not really motivated now because it's twice the work. So what happens? You let that slide. And then it becomes week three. The next Monday runs around. And then here we are sitting here Monday the 15th. And you're like, all right, I got to do three chapters now because I'm really far behind. And you're like, oh, this is daunting. You might get a page out, but you still don't ask too much. And eventually, six, seven, eight months later, you're way behind the, the ballpark. And, and I'm looking at my teachers in here. Tati's in here. She's a teacher. This is what students do all the time. They skip an assignment, and one assignment becomes two, two becomes four. Next thing you know, they're at the end of the semester saying, teach, I need more time. I was a student. I know how it works. You know what I mean? And that level of focus when the progress is dying, right? Like basically focus dies when progress dies, right? So anytime you have lack of progress, you lose focus because you become unmotivated. So this is why I celebrate the small victories. This is why do the things that matter. This is why get clear on what your mission is. Get absolutely solid, clear on what your mission is. Now, if you are not a purpose-driven purpose because you person because you haven't figured that purpose out yet, here is where the key to success stands. You say to yourself, I want to do this, right? I'm gonna pick an easy one for people. All right. Let's say, you know, people say, Hey, I want to I want to lose weight. If you ask the average person in the chat right now, hey, you want to lose weight, what are you gonna say? Most people are gonna come at you with like 20 or 30, maybe 40 pounds. Trying to lose 40 pounds is very hard. Trying to lose 10 pounds is kind of easy. So where do you set your goal? 15. You need it to be at the very edge of your comfort zone, slightly out of reach. If you say, I'm going to do five, all you got to do to lose five, honestly, is drink a metric F ton of water for like one day and, you know, don't eat and sweat. It's not healthy, but you'll lose five instantly. <laughs> just just in water weight. Because you, you drink so much that your body doesn't crave it. Yeah, that's we used to do that in wrestling. Right? You can lose five simply just by chunking water. But don't do that. It's super unhealthy. <laughs> uh, but, you know, again, most people... You know, when we, uh, where's, I wish Valerie was here today. Uh, one of our, one of our family, Valerie, we were doing a, a thing that required you to make 30 pieces of content in a day. This was Vlogmas about uh, 2000. And she's like, you know, doc, I'm not going to do that. I don't like that. Blah, 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 blah. So she said, I'm going to do seven. And that was cool. Seven for her was at the edge of her comfort zone. She blasted through seven. She calls me up on day 10. You know what, you son of a, <laughs> I didn't think I could do seven, and now I'm at day 10. I like this, right? Then all of a sudden, day 10 became day 15, and day 15 became day 20. And you know what I mean? So she put herself just at the edge of her comfort zone. She committed to that seven, which was extremely hard for her. For me, it's laughable, but for her, it was extremely difficult. But she put it outside of her comfort zone. She could have said, I'll just try one, and that would have been it. You know, so you have to put yourself at the edge of your comfort zone and then strive for that until you can get more clear on your mission, more clear on your purpose. Once you know your purpose, you don't need these weird techniques because you're just driven. You know exactly where you're going and you know how to get there and you're on a mission. And, you know, we could do some purpose workshops at some point in time. I just got to stop moving. I'm, I'm Oscar Mike for the next two and a half months. All right. Now, I'm going to give you some solid action steps and then we're going to dip into the Q&A. All right. Let's do the solid action steps. This one, I literally mean this. And again, I'm going to roll all the way back to your excuses valid. So what? <laughs> what are you going to do about it? All right, listen. I want you to start. Write this down. If you're not moving, write this down. Uh, if you are moving, say it out loud. Don't mutter it under your breath. Just say it out loud. I'm telling you, the reason why I say you want to say these things out loud is that's how it sticks. When I was learning language, the reason why I speak Japanese is you have to do it out loud. If you do it just writing paper or reading a book, it will not stick to your brain. So here you go. 
And I'm going to start with 15. And if you even utter, I don't have 15, shut the, change it to 10. But not doing this will leave you exactly where you are this very minute at the end of this process. Okay? So I'm going to challenge you. And I don't even mean start on Monday. I'm going to challenge you to do this now. Hold on. Let me do something real quick. All right. So what I want you to do, 15 minutes a day, and I don't care how you're going to do it. I want you to, oh, cool. It ends on July 3rd. So let's call it July 4th. Um, start 15 minutes earlier every day. I don't care what you got. Roll the clock back. Start 15 minutes earlier. If you're the person that got to wake up and feed your kids and then wash some socks and do all this other stuff, whatever, 15 minutes earlier. Roll the clock back 15 minutes and be legit about it. Like, no snooze buttons, like feet on the ground. Okay. Do this for 88 days. Why 88? Because it's my freaking favorite number. I just peel it out of the sky. It could be whatever. I'm picking 88 because 30 is too easy. 60 is kind of easy. 90 becomes habitual for sure. 67 is habitual about what they say. 88 means you did better than, you know, 60, right? You did better than 30. So we're going to do this for 88 days. July 4th is when it ends. They give you some independence. We're going to wake that ass up 15 minutes earlier. And I want you to pick one aspect one single solitary aspect of your mission, of your purpose, of your business, and you're going to study that or do deep work on that. So let's just pause it. You're trying to grow your email list. You're going to wake up 15 minutes earlier every day for the next 88 days, and you're going to absolutely do something Related to growing your email business. Let's say you're making a foreign language course. You're going to 15 minutes and you're going to absolutely work on that, right? Let's say you're going to be that one hole <laughs> who says, I don't have 15 minutes. Take two seven and a half minute longer shits. So if you go in the bathroom and you knock out your business and you out of there in three minutes, we're going to turn them into 10 minute shits. I don't want any excuse. I'm seriously, if you really want to win, you're going to have to do this because what you're doing right now is not working. Okay. I'm not going to be that person that says, get off of social media. You already know if you spend more than 15 minutes a day on social. I'm not going to be that person that says, you know, don't watch your favorite TV show. I'm watching Survivor right now because I'm watching Liz and Liz is kicking butt. But you're going to have to find it. So if you're trying to get better at audio, Mary Lou. Then 15 minutes a day, you're going to study the shit out of audio. You're going to compress. You're going to EQ. You're going to whatever. Right? If you can't do 15, 10. Anything less than that, you're bullshitting. There's no human being on the planet that does not have an extra 10 minutes in the day. Look, if you want to win that bad, not send yourself to prison for 90 days so you can get this done. I'm just saying, stop, stop what you're doing because I'm about to ruin the image and the style that they used to. 99% of the people listening to this have it in there and they are lying about it. They're cheating about it. And here's the problem. If you're doing that, then what you're trying to do, you don't really want to do. So let's refocus because that means that you're pointing the wrong direction. If you are struggling to find the 15 minutes to make your podcast better you don't really want to do your podcast. You're doing it because somebody told you you have to do it. If you don't have that extra 15 minutes in your day to figure out why you can't grow this portion of your business or expand this portion of your business, it's because you don't want to do that. So let's put ourselves in a position to something that you actually want to do. Learn another language, play the piano, learn some guitar chords, whatever the case may be. 
if you are if you find that what you're doing is work, you probably don't want to do it, and you're screwing yourself up. You know what I'm saying? So, at this point in time, seriously, fit start 15 minutes earlier. Pick one aspect of your business or your your channel, your podcast, whatever that situation is for you, and study ad nauseum and do deep work ad nauseum. And then the last portion I'm going to add to you, spend about five minutes a day journaling your progress on that. So we're going to take 20 minutes. You have 20 minutes. Now, can you study in the car? Kind of. It's half-assing it, but kind of. If you're in traffic, you can study. You should already be doing that anyway. You know, don't listen to Tay. Don't listen to B. Allen say. Listen to the Huberman Project or whatever you're into. Listen to Mr. Camera Junkie. Listen to me. <laughs> like, whatever. Don't. It, 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 no more. You can not mind a lot. No, whatever. Like no red drum. You're gonna focus, okay? That's it. It's, it's a simple process. We're gonna go all the way until July fourth. I want you to try this. I want you to talk about it in the comments. I want you to hit up the Discord and tell me how it's working. I want you to find yourself a partner to keep you in it. Uh, you know, talk to each other. Tell your family you're finna do this. Tell your family if you see me doing this, leave me the alone. <laughs> like, no matter what it is, right? Um, my buddy Raph just popped in the chat. Uh, Raph is going to make a, a Da Vinci course. So, he got a lot of things to do. He busy. But if he spent 15 minutes a day for the next 88 days working on that Da Vinci course, by July 4th, that course would be done and launched and selling. 15. I think the reason why people, the reason why people think this so hard is like they look at this thing in this process and they go, oh, it's a mountain of work. The only way to eat an elephant is one bite at a time. It'd take you about nine months, <laughs> but one bite at a time. If you want a vegan elephant, just call it a forest of broccoli then. <laughs> Nasty. Anyway, I'm going to run that back real quick. The focus is all about defining your mission, know exactly what you're doing. If you don't, please stop. Please stop and get that down. Write it down. Make yourself some notes, sticky notes. Stick it on your thing. Make it your wallpaper on your computer so you can see it, right? You got to remember that success is not an accident. You really have to do some stuff. None of this stuff happens overnight. All the virality crap is BS. You need to define exactly what that success looks like for you. Nobody else. You want to know exactly what that success looks like for you. So like I mentioned a minute ago, my buddy Raphael is making this uh, Da Vinci course. If Raphael says I need to sell 150 copies of the Da Vinci course in order for it to be worth a while, that's the answer. I need to sell 151 and then I would drink some 151, right? Uh, and everything that comes into play while you're in this focus mode, if it doesn't move you closer to the mission, the answer is no. Every time somebody brings something brand new to your situation, you want to say no first and then think about it over the 24 hour period. And then if it still excites you, then say no, say yes. So let I'll use this. If this scares the absolute crap out of you, go ahead right now and say no first. Think about it, and then come Monday morning and make a decision. Then you're going to be July 6th. We ain't going to be mad at you. But I promise you, if you follow this, you will definitely make some moves, right? Uh, we want to make fewer decisions. We want to put ourselves in a position to have some systems in place that allow us to sit down and do what we need to do. Every time something comes to you where you have to sit there and stop and think about it, it's going to throw you for a loop and you lose focus, right? And most of all, stop browsing, stop hunting. If you have taken, say, three of those uh, Da Vinci courses and you still can't use Da Vinci, stop. Switch the scenery. Delete Da Vinci. Don't even bother. If you've taken three Final Cut Pro courses and you still can't Final Cut Pro, stop. 
put it on the back burner. I hate to say this out loud. Use cap cut, move on. Because you're just spinning your damn wheels, right? And you're spinning your wheels is not getting you anywhere. So stop. You can revisit that, right? Put that in your someday maybe box. If you wake up in the morning and you check your email or your to-do list or your family chore sheet or whatever, and you're always responding or reacting or replying or you're handling somebody else's business, stop that. That starts with no, number one. And number two, if you're controlled by your inbox, you're absolutely losing. I check email twice a day. One in the morning, one at night. I never check it in the middle. If you email me in the middle of the day, you probably don't get a response. Unless I absolutely know it's coming and I'm going to respond to it. Normally, you ain't hearing from me. And if, if you're quick to respond to every text that comes in or you're quick to respond to every emails that come in, stop that mess. Let that person marinate for an hour, especially if it's not an emergency. And eventually, they'll stop bothering you. They'll bother the person that reacts to them the quickest. So if you're the empath... Thank you for being you because we need you. I'm gonna, I would try to coach you out of it, but I'm gonna tell you, no, keep that because everybody will go to you because you will listen to their bullshit and I won't. All right, you also have to remember that uh, focus dies with lack of progress. So, the longer you take to make any progression forward, the more unfocused you will become. Very important. Very important. So you have to celebrate those victories. You got to move the needle a little bit. And with that needle, you kind of get jacked up and you're ready to go. You want to keep going. You want to keep going. Now, if you if you still can't figure this out, listen, like legit for the next six months, just try this. Say no to everything. Legit. Again, say no to everything. Give it a 24-hour period. If you still feel like it say yes. If it still moves you towards your mission, say yes. Other than that, that's it. And the last thing is, we're going to back that clock up. We're going to wake up 15 minutes earlier, and you're going to spend that exact 15 minutes studying and doing deep work on whatever is the most important thing it takes to move the needle in your mission. Growing your business, growing your church, uh, losing that weight, uh, writing that book, uh, writing this Da Vinci course, no matter what it is, you're going to spend that deep focus work at least 15 minutes a day, and you're going to spend five minutes a day journaling. And if you're that person who come up in the chat talking about, I can't spend 15 minutes a day, cool, divide it up into two longer shits, like just stay in the bathroom and, and study. Nobody will bother you there, in theory, <laughs> in theory. All right, that is... Basically, my quick conversation about uh, focus and deep work. There's lots of books on the topic. There's whatever. You can dive into some of that. If you have questions, comments, feedback, write that in the comment section below. If any of this stuff helped you, please share it with somebody. I think it's important. If you want to be part of the project, slide into the Discord. We do lots of uh, conversations in there. We can keep each other going, you know, sort of figure this out. And I have an announcement for you. I'm doing an amazing video on Tuesday. I'm bringing in my AI coach, and I was super surprised because he said yes, but my AI coach is going to come through, and we're going to do this session, and that's going to be this Tuesday where the, where the Q&A normally sits. So if you're around, check it out. If you're watching this on replay, then watch the replay of that because I guarantee it's going to be dope. That's coming up this Tuesday, 8 a.m. Hey! And if you want to be part of the live studio audience for when I record these sorts of things, this is my new video podcast shortcut. Just come here Tuesday, Saturday, 8 a.m. Hawaiian. I record these things, and then you'll be seeing this at the replay in a couple of days. Now, I'm going to throw up a couple more videos I think you should watch. Enjoy those. All right, QA people. Let's get in here. Mm. Oh, I forgot to hit the marker. Come on, boy. Why you going? Dude, loving the new cheat code setup. Why you gotta be like that, Jeremy? <laughs> uh, why you gotta be like that? I'm scrolling. Hey, I see Rob is in the building. Good to see you, Poppy. Oh, yes. You know what it is, George. You know what it is, George. Let me see. Everyone's saying hi. I love the fact that you're in here. Mark is with the jokes already. <laughs> hey, Mark. Hup, hup, hup. <laughs> Feelings ain't facts. Yo, I need to bust. I need to make that into a shirt. <laughs> it's super funny. I started talking about impact. Yo, what's up, Ash? 
bingo. <laughs> uh, when I pop in and then Tati, I talk about impasse and Tati pops up. Love you, Tati. It's good to see you here, Auntie. Uh, what's up, Shen? Good to see you in the building. Melvin in the building. Boom. Paul is here. Hope things are doing well with you, uh, good, my, my gentleman, fella. Uh, boom. Uh, you can always have excuses or results. You can't have both. 100%. I, one of my favorite sayings in the world, Mark, literally one of my favorite sayings in the world. You can have excuses or results, but you can't have both. Absolutely. Boom. <laughs> Victor, this is true. Uh, oh, my God. I have a con. I have one, two, three constant overthinkers in my circle. Uh, okay, in my family. <laughs> Drive me nuts. I'm just like, make a decision. If you get it wrong, nobody cares. We got your back. Yo, my entire family overthinks everything. and They drive me nuts. Absolutely insane. Uh, <laughs> actually, yes, Paul. Saying no can feel real good. Especially saying no. To, never mind. <laughs> uh, yes, materialistic things uh, fade. Uh, for me, uh, not Miles. Chris, exactly, not Chris Body. I could only be the best of me, 100%. 100%. Man, could you imagine, like, the pressure of wanting to be the next Miles Davis? There will never be. I'm sorry. That's why I hate when people be like, oh, Steph Curry's like the next Mike Jordan. No, Steph Curry's the first Steph Curry. You know what I mean? Like, Jordan is Jordan. Thank you, Tommy, for the recap. I think that one's super important. <laughs> Mark, you know, uh, no is shorter than yes. Love it. Start. There you go. Luis knows. This is my favorite saying in the planet right now. The success you're looking for is the work you're avoiding, you know, while you're hunting for these shortcuts. All right, here we go with the toll free calls on the Saturday. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Boom. Yo. Yo, listen, I was talking about you, Ali, at Podcast Movement, because I met these kids from the Cornhusker Nation, and they're getting ready to do this podcast, and um, they just started out, and I was trying to tell them they need to jump into Ecamm and, like, make their whole process better, so I'm going to link you guys up. I think he said there is a Discord for the people that do podcasts like you that cover, you know, collegiate sports, there's like a, a college fan based like hookup situation that they're all they all get involved. But I'm definitely gonna link you two guys up. You and TJ, you guys are in the right ballpark to help each other out. And building a network like that really, really expands, right? That's that collaboration joint. So good to see you all. I'll hook you up with that. What is up, sis? Good to see you here. What's up, cuz? Good to see you here. Boom, boom, boom. Let's see. Uh, some people get a kick out of starting fires. They thrive on the chaos. 100%. Yo, that is it, Kev. We're talking about the the digital um, uh, arsonists. That's the word. Digital arsonists. I'm going to write this down. I'm making something new. If you guys come up with a better name than that, let me know. I'm going to work with digital arsonists right now. Bingo. Love it. Love it. That's that's a good piece of content right there. <laughs> Seems like I'm buying a camera with all this autofocus. <laughs> Listen, Dina, tell you, is this, is this the best thing? <laughs> right? A hundred percent, bro. Like, when I learned that trick, I was like, yo, on like Donkey Kong, I am never, I don't even answer, I don't even look, bro, it's kind of funny. <laughs> yes, everyone thinks we need to be 24-7, 100%. All right, so Flo says, uh, do you think, do you think when people value their time, they will put boundaries around making themselves available in a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And you know what? Here's the thing. I, I mentioned this way, way back in the day and I, I didn't talk about it today, but I guess I probably should have. One of the first things you need to do in this process, doing what we do, tell your family, this is what I'm doing. And when you see me doing this, don't at me, bro. Like, don't talk to me, don't come to me, don't bring me no questions, don't interrupt. 
I am working on my fitness. I am here, you know. Sorry, I almost um, I just almost had Hey Stacy jump up in my head. <laughs> I just had Fergie, Fergalicious death. Sorry, Fergalicious death. <laughs> Sorry, my musical director hit really hard right there. <laughs> but you need to tell you need to tell the fam. Listen, this is you out, you out, friends, you out. My best friends in the world. Like we always kicked it. We always were hanging out doing something, right? We would do our, our bike rides or go drinking or like whatever. And then at first they teased me and they used to come to all of my streams and be like, oh, look at Doc doing his little podcast thing again. Oh, he think he had YouTube. Ain't you too old for that? Blah, blah, blah. And then they started seeing me grow and getting better. And then they were like, oh, I see you playing. Okay, fam. You know, then they start like, hey, I, I had something come up. I didn't want to bug you. Uh, if you have a moment, can you? If not, I fully understand. I know you're busy doing your thing. Like, my partner in the wood shop, who is legit one of my best friends in the world, like, love that cat to death. I always used to have to go back and do some of the programming for the CNC. And now he's like, you know what? You're, you're so busy doing your thing. And he sees the success that I'm having and being a real friend, because like I said, one of my best friends in the world, being a real friend, he doesn't want to bother me. So he hit me up on a Sunday and he was like, I need you to take me to Best Buy. And I was like, why? He goes, because I'm going to get my a computer for me to study this CNC stuff at home. I'm going to figure this out because you're too busy and I can't always depend on you to come in and kind of help me out. And I fully get that. And I was like, bet. So I got him. We sat down, threw a bottle of whiskey and some, some teaching him how to use the software. Like kid is building his restaurant right now and he's doing all of the programming by himself. Every once in a while, he'll text me. It's like, if you see this, uh, let me know. I'll keep working on it, but I'm stuck somewhere. But if you see this, you know, whatever. And I'll, I'll see it and I'll answer him. Because now he's not pulling me away. He took responsibility for himself. The minute I made myself unavailable, and not, not that I didn't want to, um, because I like doing it. It's really fun to me. But I just can't. I can't do both, right? You, you cannot uh, swim and keep your arms by your side at the same time. Well, yes, you can. But anyway, never mind. You know what I'm saying. You can't do certain things you can't do two at the same time, right? You can't have a cake and eat it too. So he started, He really took responsibility, started studying on his own, and he's been good enough to handle this project. And, and the you know three or four times over the last six months where he's run into a, a problem, like, you know, he's like, all right, I give up. This is getting on my nerves. He'll come by after we're done all of this, you know, like six or seven bring some food or whiskey or whatever, we can knock it out. You know what I mean? So you do definitely have to put those boundaries and you have to make sure that the people closest to you understand it because they're the ones that will violate the boundaries the most. Right? <laughs> there you go. There you go, Tots. Boom. <laughs> you got me with the thumbnail. Love you, DC. Good to see you, fam. Speaking about people who be putting in that hard work, like I'm saying, like, you know, talking about the, the digital anarchists of the planet, uh, Paul and and Daniel, Andy, Neil, they've been doing a good job of like putting out those fires. But man, those people are obnoxious. What is up, SP? Good to see you here, Sean. Y'all know if you guys know this, but Sean is my favorite of the newbies uh, just because he spells his name exactly like me. <laughs> so. We don't got to do nothing else. We got the Sean, Team Sean together. So that's my man's right there. Boom. Uh, I know a guy that asked if I could uh, if I could cover him for a few minutes <laughs> while he was in the meeting. And then he never showed up. Yeah, sorry. It wasn't my fault, man. The meeting was good. But this meeting will help all of you guys out in the long run. So trust me on that. <laughs> uh, 88 is equal to travel time. 100%, bro. 100%. <laughs> Uh, every time Doc has the same numbers in our day. <laughs> oh, everyone has the same numbers, same number of hours in a day. I'm in. I appreciate you, Flo. Uh, 15 minutes. I'm seriously like, if you really spent the next 88 days, 15 minutes day working on your 
fitness, working on your fitness, Stacy, uh, you will be fine. You'll be fine. Listen, do this. Try try this. If you if you got, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Like I'm I'm scared. I have no idea. Try this. Uh, make an appointment with your your man, your doctor. Have them take some vitals and a little blood tests. Okay, if you're covered by insurance, and then for the next 88 days, just think about small, minor, healthy changes. Right, a little bit more water, a little bit more walking, a little bit less sugar, a little bit less saturated fats, and at the end of that 88 days, go do another blood test. I'm not talking about stop eating ice cream. You know, I'm not talking about stop it with the Cafe Bustelo, you know. You know, I mean, I take two packs a day down to one and a half packs a day, all of the above. If you just did that for 88 days, bro, it would change your freaking life. It just would. So everybody has it in them. Everybody's got excuses, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Tati is egging on my musical Tourette's. What is up, Derek? Good to see you, fam. <laughs> this ain't Texas. <laughs> Dang it, don't do that, ref. You know what happens. <laughs> Drive Time University is magic, 100%. I appreciate it. Uh, audiobooks are good, but here's the thing I, I've discovered with audiobooks. When you get to a point that's mad salient, press pause for a second. Repeat that part to yourself a couple times, right? Uh, say it out loud. I don't care if anybody's in the car with you. You got to stop. Hit pause and be like, yes. Yes to this, yes to this. Say it over and over a couple of times. Let that sink. The one problem with audiobooks is the, um, I forgot the teacher word for this. The comprehension is a little bit less, but I love me some audiobooks. Boom. Thank you, Cat. Paul, see, Paul committed to 100 days of AI to come and fishing. Boom. Thank you, Cat. Ooh, if my people just covered it. <laughs> right, a permanent mark on your display. Man, Mark, you're in trouble, bro. See? Come on. See, Raph is telling you the facts. He spent an hour a day, just under an hour, under 60 days and an hour a day to, to do the final cut course. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for that uh, insight there, Raph. Man, I wish he was coming to NAB. We about to have some fun. Five minutes a day to document the journey, 100%. That, that alone, like, people say, well, I don't, I can't do a whole journey. Dude, write a single sentence. Like, just because, anybody here got a grandma, had a grandma, been to grandma's house? Pretty much all of us. A couple few of us might have not been lucky enough to know their grandma. You go to grandma's house, yo, she gonna bring you a plate. At nine years old, she thinks you're a freaking linebacker for the New York Giants. That plate is going to be like this. I don't care what it is. Aro con pollo, or pateles, or uh, steak and eggs, or, you know, turkey and stuffing, or potato salad with raisins in it. Sorry, white folks. <laughs> you're going to get a plate that's just dumb. And when she sits in front of you, all you can do is thank you, ma'am. Lord Jesus, help you for the food, and then eat a little bit, eat much as you can, and then walk away. So when someone like me says, hey, you need to spend five minutes a day journaling, large portion will be like, I can't, I don't have time to journal because I'm, I got kids. Then write a fucking sentence and shut up. Like, it, it's just like grandma and that plate. Because I guarantee you, you won't stop at one. You One will turn into two, turn with two will turn into ten, and next thing you know, you're actually journeying for that 10, 15 minutes a day. And you look back on your journal, and you just feel better, and things are more sticky to your brain. It's, it's healthy. This is why this practice has existed for decades. This is why at the end of Star Trek, Captain's Log, Star Date 2917, Right. This is why in and all you folks that have been to church is why they got these Bible journals. And like it's been around since ever. It's, it's been around long as water been wet. Cave paintings on the walls was journaling, son. 
Y'all just need to. Oh, come on. Wrath. My favorite new joint. I think you're the one that taught it to me. Procrasta learning. Yo, people spend way too much time procrasta learning. Yes, that is it. 100%. Dang it, why my screenshot thing ain't working? What is going on here? Dude, my my screenshot thing is broken. Let me hit this. Oh, snap. I have a dialogue box open somewhere. Anyway, we'll figure this out later. I know what I know what it is. I can do it by hand. Bam. Oh, my app. Must have accidentally quit it. There it is. Bingo. All right. I'm just keeping this. Sorry. I was keeping uh, Rafi's comment because that's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah. 100% risk. My problem. 100% my problem. I am in your boat. And that's why I know for the people that can't avoid it, they should. Because that is 100% my problem. And I'm, it's a good problem to have. I'm not, I ain't no bitch. <laughs> okay. It is a good problem to have. But, oh my God. If I could, I would avoid this. Because I know, I, listen, me, Paul, Katie, Caleb, we have a whole game plan for the day. And then one of these mofos in the community blow something up or Facebook decides to stop doing something with our whole day is gone putting out a fire from somebody else so we live in a different environment where we have no choice so fully understand that and we can't do that. We have no choice but to Superman through it. So we're in a different ballgame. Not most people don't have that, and they're full of shit if they say they do. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, boom! Focus dies without progress. One hundred percent flow. Yep. The do not disturb. That's why they put it there, <laughs> uh, Jerry. The do not disturb thing is a is a thing. Unless it's actually your responsibility, family, best friend, pet, it's not your responsibility. Focus on you and what's important. 100% ref. Love it. For those that make a to-do list, if you find yourself adding tasks during the day <laughs> that was not on the list, then immediately taking it off, you're not on task. Oh, there you go. There you go, Tommy. I like that. Uh, most people know what it'll take to get it done, but just don't do it. You know what it takes. Do it. Plan it, do it, follow through, 100%. Y'all, Tuesday is going to be crazy. <laughs> uh, Tuesday is going to be crazy. Raph, I love this. AI took my job to the next level. <laughs> that is super good. You know, Tommy, that's what this is for, though, right? Sometimes just talking this through helps me, helps us. Like, we figure out where we're skipping when we hear it again. So, boom. <laughs> uh, thank you, SP. I appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you. Exactly. That's where I learned it from. Oh, dude, I am totally excited. NAB, I got a week. I just started packing. G -G 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 -G. Yo, I got to see GG last week, and y'all didn't. So there. <laughs> we got to hang out. And have us some good ass food at um what's that thing called, Gigi? Fixins? Fixins in LA is banging. <laughs> it is banging. Uh so good. Good to see you, Gigi. Uh corporate cause of death, the paralysis of analysis. 100 <laughs> percent Tati is messing with my musical Tourette's again. Uh yes, yes, Sean. So my mic is so like let me English this because I'm having a rough time. My 
AI coach, right? And here's how, here's what happens. When I decide I'm going to go in on something, I did exactly what Paul is talking about. I gave myself a challenge, right? I'm going to spend the next, like, 90 days studying this. And if it kicks, it kicks. If it don't, it don't. And I was watching all of these people half-assing it with the AI stuff. And I even watched some of my closest friends. AI is two weeks old. Two weeks. Okay. November 21st of 2022. It kind of dropped out to the masses, and then mid-December of that same time, I was in Japan, and I'm seeing some of my contemporaries, I'm an AI expert, download my prompt list. And I was like, bitch, you don't know shit about AI. You just you just doing what marketing people do. You're trying to sell some shit. And I was like, I, everybody that knows me, uh, uh, Sean, more closely my old school LGL people. I will not do a course for a course sake. I am not going to claim to be like boss mode or some shit that just came out. Um, I'm going to spend some time and if it works, I'll try to pass it to my people. So I was like, I'm going to dive in on this uh, for like a month, see what kicks and then I'll go further. And in the process of doing that, I ran into my man Igor over here and I was like, of the people talking shit on the internet, he had a certain swag or style that sort of matched me. And this is what I mean by, um, this is what I mean by, even though somebody else already made that video you want to make, make it anyway, because you never know the person that's going to resonate with you. So Igor, there's a kid named Matt Wolf, uh, Dave Shapiro, there's a bunch of them out there, but Igor was the dude that just, just clicked right and then so i was watching him his tutorials and then he said hey i'm gonna try to do this live stream and then while he was trying to do this live stream it was shitty and i was like yo i hit him in the dm i was like fam i've been watching you for like a month now your content's off the hook uh you should check out ecamm live i sent him paul's affiliate code <laughs> and then i said if you need anything let me know i'll help you out but a week later he did a stream with ecamm live and it was better. And I was like, oh, yes, there it is. And so we just became sort of good friends from there. And I've been a member of his, uh, like, I have my LGL community. I've been a member of his AI Advantage community. And, like, here's a dude that's constantly working and constantly learning. And talk about, talk about being laser focused on something and what I mean by that. Yes, the topic is hot. And, yes, the topic is trending. But I don't want anybody to make the excuse but my man's grew his channel to like 200,000 in a year and a half by being laser focused. And I think this is where people are like, oh, no, but I want to cover this, this, that, and this else thing. And then they wonder why they have a hard time growing. Can you grow like that? Yes. Is it going to be easy? No. But if I go over and I peek on Igor's channel real quick, I make sure I got my facts right. 211,000. 211,000 in literally 18 months or just just short of 18 months. Let me get here. So, yes, if you do the damn thing and you don't goof it off and you stay laser focused and you create with intention and you show up every week like you say you fitna, you can do this thing. You know, man went from a channel with nothing to having a whole team of folks in a matter of no time. Because of that focus. It's in there. Everyone has it. I'm telling you, most people are just making excuses. You know why you don't have time? Here's why you don't have time. You don't have time because your channel is not making $10,000 a month. But if your channel was making $10,000 a month, you would have the time. But do you see the, the, the problem in that wheel? <laughs> you know what I mean? Do you see the problem in that wheel? You will never get to that level of God until you do that level of work that allows you to have your channel crank out 10 grand a month or more. I'm not sure what that, what that amount means to you, uh, what it is, what it was or what it shall be, but it's a thing. I don't, I'm see if I can pull this circle out of my butt real quick. So as you were born, Events happen in your life. And these events become the stories 
that either you or somebody else tells you about yourself. Those stories sort of delineate your beliefs. That's where your BS comes from, your belief system. Your belief system triggers your thoughts and your decisions, and your thoughts and your decisions trigger your actions. And your actions now become the new events in your life that then become the stories, that then reinforce the belief system, that then solidifies the thoughts and actions, that then become the next action. So it's a loop. Most of us are fucked up right here. All right, so much for monetizing this video. (laughs) But most of us are fucked up right here. Your belief system is controlling your thoughts, which is then controlling your actions, which is setting you up for the life events. So when you believe you're not worthy, you start looking for someone that validates your value in order to backfill the part of you that doesn't feel worthy. So then you become a simp, and a simp allows you to date an asshole, and then that asshole reminds you or tells you stories about how much you suck, and then you become more suck in your belief system. And it goes around, and every day she says you're a piece of shit, or he says you're a piece of shit, you believe it. And then you just circum, you go like that. You start doing the work, right? If somebody in your family told you that you were really funny when you was a little children, you believe that you got some comedy in you, and then you think you're funny, so you come in the comments, Mark, and tell jokes. (laughs) They're not funny. and I'm joking. (laughs) And you know what I mean? And it just creates a circle. So somewhere, sometimes you got to take control of your circle, and normally the best place to dive in is adjusting that belief system just a little bit. If all you did was, and now your belief sounds better, Now you would do things, you would think things differently, and it would cause you to do things differently, and that starts to rewrite the circle. And so now you can change the circle. It's an Ouroboros of pure fuckery or pure success, and it's really up to you. And it all starts here with the belief system, because a lot of times those stories that have been told aren't necessarily your words. That's somebody else's words that you're believing, and that's adjusting your belief system. And smack dead in the middle of belief, lie. Bingo, bango, pickle, mango. Take that. Okay, Tommy says, regarding journaling, I use a spiral notebook and a date uh, fresh page for my to-do list as the progress becomes on my journal recording facts, figures, thoughts, and ideas. Yes, um, we have a we have a name for that. Um, oh, my God, why is my brain dumb? <laughs> we have a name for that in Japanese. It's going to come to me. But, yes, that is very important. Um, and it's like taking that little step of writing down all of these things and building a book around writing down all of those things. That is how you build your life book. And your life book sort of helps you grow, if that makes any sense. Yeah. I don't, it's hard for me to wrap my head around because I, my brain is stuck on trying to remember what the name of it is. Uh, Zui, uh, uh, Zui Hitsu. Uh, that's what it is. It's basically a life book. Uh, Zui Hitsu. So Tommy is doing the version of journaling known as a Zui Hitsu. Um, and yeah, you write your page down. You write little notes to yourself. Some new fact that came into play that you're really in love with, you can do that. Um, all of the above, so forth, so on, etc. But it's basically like people that write memoirs, right? So, yeah. Well, we covered that in a video a while back. But, Tommy, thank you for that. Learn by doing action all day long. I learned to run construction projects by running construction projects. All right, girl. Damn, that's sick. That's six. Boom. 
<laughs> Your response. Oh, I get it. Tommy bought something for Rich. So Tommy said that uh, Rich's response time was excellent. Love it. Love you. Uh, bruh, there's nothing like having your whole day blown up. It is really, really crazy. Yo, what is a Brandy? Yo, Brandy is one of my dearest friends. Uh, when when we were doing all kind of things, young and stupid and possibly illegal, <laughs> Brandy was the, either the voice of reason or she would egg me on to do stupid stuff. <laughs> one of the two. <laughs> one of the best things I ever heard was if you try to chase two rabbits, you catch neither. Hundred percent, Matthew. Uh, we we know it as like trying to get two rabbits out of the hole. You can only get one rabbit out of the hole because they're too fat, so you can only get one at a time. Bug nasty. Uh, Buck, did you get a box from Chicago this week? I am curious because I got a box from Chicago and I would love to hit some notes before we can talk about it. Uh, Tom, excited to watch. Thank you. You know what's funny? Uh, 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 Tom is a couple weeks back. Sean asked me, like, oh, you should check out this guy, Tom Buck. I was like, that dick? <laughs> no, I'm joking. That's my man's right there. I get to hang out with Tom next week. We're going to NAB together, so I get to see Tom and Heather. HR is in the building. We're going to have fun in their favorite city, which is Lost Wages. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's okay. This park is trimmed up. <laughs> nah, dude, you're good. Oh, you didn't get? Oh, okay. Well, then I will show you. And it's kind of it's kind of exciting. It's kind of exciting. Anyway, maybe Timothy, I will bring it to Nab. Anyway, looking forward to uh, hanging out with you at the event on Saturday, and then possibly, if if my schedule permits, I will join you, Heather, and Cat for uh, breaking the bread. What is up, brother? Good to see you here. We got welcome mans to the party. Appreciate you. Thank you for being here. And I just got to say, kind of looks like Kareem. <laughs> I'm sure you heard that before, but it, it works for me. Uh, thank you. Matthew, I hated trying to catch that rabbit in Super Mario. Matthew, that's too funny. Thank you, Nation. Thank you. I can't wait to catch up with Tom. It's been it's been about a year and a half, maybe two years, since we last got to hang out. And you guys know, I was talking about this on, um, I was talking about this the other day. And we were talking about, like, meeting, I know, we were at Podcast Movement Evolutions, and we are talking about meeting people IRL and then just being disheartened when we figure out they're not really who they are online. I can say 100% pure. Tom is exactly Tom. 100%. Sorry, my, my brother-in-law is flying in today and he's blowing up the ping box. And family can punch through the D&D. &D, so there's that. <laughs> anyway, um, yes, Tom is exactly who he say he is. Like, you know, the Neo uh, Lupe fiasco, if you are who you say you are, a superstar, and they have no fear, the, uh, the camera's here, that is Tom. And I love that. I love it when you meet somebody IRL and they are exactly who they pretend to be on the internet. Uh, <laughs> it's stupid. <laughs> because it's really, it's really, I won't say it's upsetting because I don't give that much of F, but it just kind of like, I don't know, it just feels ick for to see someone in real life and they're not like who they portray to be. I don't know. Like, I don't call it disappointing because I don't put my eggs in anyone else's basket. I'm responsible for my own damn eggs. But it just, it's just like, I hate that feeling. I hate knowing that, you know, someone is just fronting. Like, it's not necessary, fam. Like, the internet will love you no matter where you are. We've seen some of the absolute worst people in the planet, and the internet loves them. So you can be who you want to be, son. <laughs> hey, listen. I started the tool chest. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my God. I saw Tom, I saw your redo of the, the studio, and... I love it. I've been in the process. I just haven't had the time. I've been too busy uh, moving around the country. But, yeah, I want to get another Millie. 
for the opposite side. But I think this version of Millie is discontinued, which is going to be horrible because this version of Millie is solid as a rock. And the Husky ones are dope. This is if if the Husky one was an A74, this is an FX6. Like it's a tank. It's the absolute tank. And I heard they discontinued it, which is gonna suck because now I can't get a matching set for the other side. Um, but yes, I love that. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. We do have a similar uh, you know, beard face. What is up, Bic? Good to see you, fam. Good to see you. Uh, oh, the matte black. Yeah, the, the Husky versions are dope. Uh, the, the reason why I got the Millie one is I just have Milwaukee everything. Like, look. Oh, you can't see it. You still can't see it. Beat it, Matt. See? I have a whole wall of that. Like, my, my the wood shop for me is Milwaukee everything. So when I saw it, I was going. I went in to buy the Husky one. I saw the Milwaukee one and did this face. <laughs> so I bought it. Uh, yeah, super cool. I, I really do. I think this is super handy. And having the wood top, the wood top acts as a surface for shooting uh, product on in the whole nine yards. So super cool. Again, I want to remind everybody I, I have to jump because I have the uh, Spectrum Man coming to my house. My fiber is being weird. And we got storms in Hawaii, so I, I need the fiber to work. Um, but Tuesday is going to be super good. Like I said, I am bringing in, um, I'm bringing in literally one of my favorite creators in the planet, and is Igor, and we're gonna talk about you know, like some. I want you to walk away with some things that you could actually use if you're trying to do the whole AI maneuver for your content. I want you to walk away with some stuff that will actually move the needle. 100%. Yes, this is on, I want to say three and a half inch casters. These suckers are big. <laughs> this <is> Tom. <laughs> Wait, how's Tina do it? Tom. <laughs> yes, that is exactly correct. The fiber will help you move the needle. Listen, gang, since we're here, before I jump, let me open this real quick. I've been meaning to do this. I hope AT is around. Boom. I got my barrel AX. <laughs> Let me crack it open. <sighs> Boom. Opening the barrel AX. Boom. Let me move things out my way. Move it. Get out the way. Get out the way. Get out the way. Oh no. Boys up. Boom boom. Let me do this. Over his shots. This thing is cool. So, oh, there it is. AT also got, you got your barrel AX too, right, AT? Curious. All right. So, I don't know who come up with these stupid product names, but what ifs? Let's take a look inside the box. Well, Joe. The answer to your question is as follows. The Barrel AX is a AX3000 Wi-Fi 6 router made by GLINet. Come out of this box. Okay, wait. I got to take this off, Joe. I got to do this again because I want to use this for Amazon. So, so I want to make my job easier. I try to tell you guys, make the content where you can make the content. So I want to make this for Amazon. So I make a couple adjustments to my little set right here. Move this out the way and this out the way. And the knife can stay. These little edges on the periphery, no biggie. This camera is cool right here. Everything is good. Battery out. Milwaukee label down. They don't like they don't want you to look like you sponsor something. Okay. So we're gonna open this and I'll talk about it. Let me move my keyboard rest. So I'm just saving myself the hassle of having to make another Amazon video later. So this is my Amazon unboxing video. Nobody heard that. Don't fall. Okay, here we go. Let me make a shift mark. 
Boom. Barrel A X B E R Y L A X. I got in my brand new Barrel A X today. Let's get it open. Let's see what is in the package. Okay. So the Barrel A X is a Wi Fi 6 router. Super small, portable. The reason why you want to have one of these is if you travel at all, you get into your hotel and your hotel just has that single Wi-Fi connection and you got all your devices. Doesn't always work. Can be a little slow. A lot of hotels still have the hard wire available for you to plug in. So what you do is you take a device like this, which is really tiny. It's really tiny, doesn't weigh anything. You can like package it easy. You're gonna find that spot in your telly. You're gonna plug it into the WAN port here. And then you're gonna take this LAN port version and plug it into your computer or pop up the little Wii antenna and use it as a Wi-Fi router. Now, what makes this thing sing, if you happen to be at a hotel that does not still have the ability for you to jack the uh, cord out of the wall, Nine times out of 10, you can get it out of the TV and use it there and then connect the smart TV back to this by Wi-Fi. But anyway, uh, if you don't have that, you this will allow you to go to the capture page on, say, Bonvoy.com or Hilton.com and connect the connection for the hotel and that capture page directly to this. And from there... You, it turns into an internal Wi-Fi into your room that you and your roommates or family members can connect to. So this is a perfect little travel router. It's very simple. It runs on a 5-volt, 3-amp USB, which means it comes with a power supply in here. Let me grab these things and throw them out of my way real quick. So here is the US plug. If you need a US plug, here is the ethernet cable, flat type, which is good. And it is Cat6, which is also good. I was hoping they wouldn't send the Cat5. Uh, you have the, um, I wanna call this European, I don't remember, don't get me lying. <laughs> this one is for England. I do, I do remember that one, Big Daddy for England. And then you have the power brick. In most cases, I probably won't carry the power brick because I have a three amp USB power supply that I travel with. So uh, still nice to have, it doesn't weigh a lot and you could just bring your appropriate plug just by locking it in place like that, okay? So you can power it from USB, you can bring the power adapter with you, but this is Wi-Fi 6 router, it has uh, some pretty phenomenal speeds and this will make your life traveling on the road a heck of a lot simpler. The number one reason why I got this is because this is what I travel with. In this little guy here, I have a 4G, actually this one's 5G router. And then I can take this guy and plug in directly to here with the ethernet port. And so this guy will pick up the signal. It'll plug into here. This will spray it out and allows me to connect at conferences without paying a conference lots and lots of money for a connection. They normally overcharge for connections. So that's the Barrel AX6. And uh, yeah, I think it's uh, pretty handy. Let's get in there. Aloha. Bingo! There it is. Boom, boom, boom. Yo, thanks, Brats. Uh, can we get a real life demo on this? Uh, this 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 actually has the. Uh, let me pull up the page, um, GG. It has Privacy Portal built in. That's why it's super sick. It is super sick. Amazon. You like how I did that, Joe? Like, if you can record your content while you already recording content, do it. Because otherwise, you're gonna like, I'll make a video about this later, and you're not gonna do it. <laughs> So I like to, while I got y'all here, we might as well just knock it out. You know what I'm saying, pimp? Like it makes your job a heck of a lot easier. Uh, this is a MiFi. Um, AG, good to see you, Poppy. This is a MiFi 3000. Um, it's basically 4G LTE. This one's 5G actually, and connected to the T-Mobile Enterprise Network. It just won't work here in the basement. 
Um, and yeah, this thing is dope. It's made by Intelligo, but it's called the Mi Fi 3000. Super dope. Not that expensive either. You could pick one up for like 220, 250, something like that. Anyway, bingo. Thank you, Sean. I appreciate it. All right, so here we go. I got his joint for 109 bucks, and it has WireGuard and OpenVPN, uh, GG. So you definitely have some security built into this bad boy. And just look how tiny it is. And it will do up to 3,000 uh, megabits per second, which means it's quick. It can handle up to 70 devices, which your hotel internet will not let you do. You can do video streaming. You can do some remote business work. You runs a small apartment. You can set up a little extra little VPN type situation. Um, and you can use either WireGuard or OpenVPN as a way to get back, which means I can easily jump back to my Synology from the road with this bad boy. And I was really stuck between uh, Keely and um, AT and myself. We were both talking about should we get the 3000 or should we get the uh, State Plus? And I ended up going with the 3000 because of the Wi-Fi 6 and because of the throughput. The throughput on this bad boy was quick, was mad quick. So I like the size of it. Yo, in the nerd space, this thing is highly touted. I will say if you travel at all and you can swing 110 bones without breaking the bank, just do it. Just do it, just do it, just do it, do it, do it now. <laughs> right now, sorry, let me do this real quick. For the for the folks in the plan and the home version, let me pop this in here. When the pimps in, when you pop it like a heart. When it get an attitude, pop it like a heart. Or oh, drop it like it's hot. See, you don't even know the damn words. Stupid. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Ah. Yo, I cannot wait. I cannot wait to test this out. We're going to um, my little Airbnb. And, you know, I know that the dude has uh, internet connected for me. But I'm still going to do my own. Why? Because that means that while I'll be sharing with Kat and Mary Lou and Robin Eden, I can still make a little VPN with this to make it separate. So we can make it so that the homeowner, not that they would, I don't think they, I'm not that paranoid, but the homeowner wouldn't be able to spy on us because we'd have a separate internet by using this little baby right here. Anyway, super swanky. Can't wait. Speaking of internet problems, <laughs> I got to go because the uh, spectrum is coming to my house. So class people, I will be doing class from upstairs. Yes, I did use the coupon. I got this for it, it says 109, but I got it for like 80 something. It was like 80 something because you check this box. And then it's cheaper. It's cheaper. It's cheaper to keep up. See, Paul got me in trouble. Now I gotta cut that part out. <laughs> anyway, appreciate you, family. Love you, mean it. Have a good one. And uh Tuesday, I'm telling you. Share that link with people who be talking spicy about AI. Anybody you know that's a creator that's in the AI game, share that link. I want as many folks as possible to show up, support my man Igor, because he's taking time. Come all the way from Portugal to jump on with us. And, yo, it's going to be the bomb. The bomb. I have the video from last week. It's actually sitting in the back end. The thing that was funny is when I downloaded the version to send to the interweb, it had the, I'm going to check and see if it's there. It had the ending, which was the music that I forgot to chop it in scenery. So I have the video ready. I had the video ready to rock and unfortunately I screwed it up. So hopefully it works now and I can, I can post it. And so I'm going to, I'm going to post it right now and I'll fix everything else after. So let me do this and there it is. I'm going to hit save. Now it is live on the YouTube. Now it is live on YouTube. Go to your channel. 
and bingo. Brand new video on YouTube. See? There it is. All right, gang. There it is. See? We just posted a video. How nice. I will see you guys in the Discord. Pop in if you down. Peace out, Buck Nasty. Good to see you, Brands. Brandy, the person who sends me the most hilarious things on Instagram. <laughs> I love you, B. Good to see you. And uh, yeah, jump in the Discord real quick. Peace out. A-Town Stomp. City of mine. How I love, how I love the city of mine. It never gets me down, city of mine.